everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being here today, and thank you especially to our special guest, Ivanka Trump. Let's give her another round of applause. It wasn't too long ago that we just met in Granite City, and we talked about workforce development backstage when her, uh, her father, the president, was here talking about what he's been able to accomplish in putting our trades and labor folks back to work. And I had no idea that we'd get a call, I think, the next day or two later saying we'd like to come back August 8th. So welcome, thank you, and I'd like to turn it over to President Chapman to offer some Lewis and Clark welcoming remarks. Thank, thank you, Congressman Davis. Um, well, I'd like to welcome everyone, really, to uh, Lewis and Clark Community College, especially Ivanka Trump, uh, Assistant to the President, representing the White House, uh, emphasizing uh, support for career and technical education at community colleges, not only here, but they're emphasizing that the, those skills that community colleges throughout the nation. Uh, we've been pleased, I've been pleased to chair uh, Congressman Davis's higher education subcommittee throughout the district. Uh, clearly he understands the importance of career and technical education. He supports all of our 40 different career and certificate programs and you'll hear some, some about that today, especially in the areas of process operations technology, instrumentation and controls, nursing and, and welding. Uh, Lewis and Clark uh, is an institution that graduates over a thousand students a year responsible for 4.5% of the region's gross regional product, has an annual uh, economic impact on the area of $369 million, and produces uh, technical and career education skills for approximately 6,600 jobs in our region. So Lewis and Clark prides itself on having a close working relationship with all of our region's employers, many of whom are here today, skilled labor, uh, many of whom serve on Lewis and Clark's advisory programs, making sure that we have the latest technology, equipment, and teaching skills that are relevant for the 21st century. So with that, I look forward to the panel and welcome all of you to Lewis and Clark Community College, especially Ivanka. Well, thank you, Dr. Chapman, and, and thank you to all the panelists. And we're going to introduce each of you uh, in a few minutes, but I just want to say thank you again. I mean, this is an important issue, and Ivanka Trump has been leading on workforce development issues, which is exactly why we talked about how to put people into good paying jobs when we were standing backstage in Granite City just a few short weeks ago. And I look out in this crowd and I see so many folks that have come up to me talking about how you want to grow your company, grow your business, but you can't find the workforce to do so. Even in my hometown of Taylorville, 11,000 people, McLean Trucking, McLean Food Distribution, can't hire enough truck drivers at $70,000 a year. Let me tell you, $70,000 a year in central Illinois is not just a not just a, a salary. That is a huge salary where families can move themselves out of poverty into the workforce and continue then to give back to our communities. I know Lou Johnson was going to be here. Lou, are you around from McLean? Where are you at? Stand up. Lou's one of the guys who runs McLean Distribution in Taylorville. And he can tell you there are a lot of folks that have worked their entire career in my hometown of Anka that have yet to make $70,000 a year. And the sheer fact that he can't hire enough drivers because we're not doing what we can in government to partner with the private sector to get people trained, Lou's having a hard time getting those jobs filled. So Lou, thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me highlight McLean too. Um, it's about jobs and the good paying jobs are available. We are at historic low unemployment, but we still have 9 million more people on food stamps today than when unemployment was at 9.5%. We've got to work together to continue to build up on some of the successes that Ivanka is going to talk to you about. And I am once again proud to welcome you to Lewis and Clark and to Southwestern Illinois. Ivanka Trump. Thank you so much, Congressman. Thank you, Congressman. And it is, is this working? Yeah. It is a pleasure to be, I should say, back because, as you noted, it was very recently that I was with you in Granite City, and there I saw something extraordinary, which is exactly what we're talking about, which is the creation of opportunity, and uh, an opportunity for all Americans, including those who had been recently displaced in, in the workforce, and, and the roaring economy and the low unemployment is creating an unprecedented climate that's creating opportunity for Americans who have jobs, 
for increased mobility and upward mobility and enhanced career opportunities. And it's creating opportunity for those who have been on the sidelines and who want that opportunity to, to enter the workforce and, and find employment. It's creating unprecedented opportunity for just about every classification of Americans. We have honest, unprecedented, historic low unemployment for African Americans. We have historically low unemployment for Hispanic Americans. We have historically low unemployment for Asian Americans. We have a 65-year low unemployment rate for women. We have historic low unemployment rates for disabled Americans. We have historic low unemployment rates for disabled Americans. It is unbelievable. So when we think about the fact that we have this tremendous roaring economy, and yet we still do have people who are outside the formal labor force, and we still do have jobs that are vacant, and yet we still have people that are unemployed, and for the first time in history, we actually have more job vacancies than unemployed people, there's a skills mismatch that exists. And so what can we do about it? Well, I think as a federal government, we're not very good, typically, at training, but we can leverage the knowledge of the private sector. And we can say, be our partner, and help us do better, help us amplify the issue, help us think about ways that we can be creative, help us leverage technology, for example, to create better transparency for our students and our workers across the country. So one of the amazing things is that the Bureau of Labor Statistics today can tell you that there are 6.6 .6 million vacant jobs. And they can tell you the industries they're in. But they can't tell you geographically where those jobs are located, and they can't tell you the underlying skill sets required to fill those jobs. So if you're a mid to late career worker looking to earn a credential because you're concerned that you're about to lose your job to automation, you can't really make an educated decision. If you're a young student thinking whether college or an alternative pathway, perhaps vocational school or community college is the right choice for you, you can't make the right choice. So one of the things we're going to do through the National Council for the American Worker, which was just established by the President two weeks ago, is harness data to enable people to make smarter and better decisions. So that's a basic thing that the government can help do. We're also going to reconcile the different workforce programs and say, you know what, there's no accountability. We're not thinking holistically about the role of education through the life cycle of the American. So right now, we come second to Mexico in not just the public, but the private sector's investment in American workers after the age of 22. So the private sector also isn't investing enough into their own workforce and skills training after um, the student graduates from, from high school or, or university. So we've called upon the private sector to partner with us and to sign what we call our Pledge to America's Workers. Initially, when we started, we said we'd like to get a half a million in private sector commitments. No federal funding, pure private sector commitments. And we started calling a few companies and, and asking for their involvement. And this is for new job opportunities for younger workers. Um, and it's also for reskilling opportunities for mid to late career workers or enhanced career opportunities. Within a matter of a few weeks, we were able to secure 4.3 million new job opportunities purely from the private sector, and we're just beginning. So we have governors across the country and employers, many of which are in this room today, large and small, trade associations large and small, signing our pledge and affirming their commitment to recognizing the importance of investing in the American worker. So we're very, very excited about that. And I just want to thank all of the employers um, within this community here in Illinois um, for signing the pledge and, and helping us think about skills training um, for, for the workforce right here um, in, in the Congressman's district. So we're very, very grateful for that as well. So really, really thank you. And, and before we go on, I, I, I do just want to say um, 
I had the pleasure of working with the congressman back in D.C. on a very important piece of legislation, Perkins Career and Technical Education. And this is something that has been bipartisan for many, many years because it works. But it was in dire need of reauthorization and modernization, yet it floundered for years. It wasn't reauthorized, it wasn't modernized, yet schools such as um, the Great Welding School, the Weber Workforce Center that I visited today benefited greatly from Perkins funding, which block grants money to the states for career and technical education. So we worked very hard. The congressman, Congressman Davis, um, was such a champion for recognizing the importance of this piece of legislation for over 11 million students and workers across the nation. And it was signed into law by the president just last week. So we are very, very excited about this. And that will directly advance the type of work that we're here today discussing and um, and seeking to do, and 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 as I should, you know, as as we talk about workforce development, I think it's important to talk about the work of the future. I think it's also incredibly in important to talk about how we define work and how we define the skills that are essential in the modern economy, increasingly digital. Um, increasingly, uh, our economy lacks people who have um, the, uh, we were just, for example, welding. And welding is now technical, right? Yes. It, was a, it was an amazing thing. We were using a piece of technology to learn how to weld. So it was virtual high-tech welding. So I think it's, it's really an amazing thing as we think about the future of education, as we think about how technology is disrupting every industry. And we and this president and this administration is supporting all forms of education that ultimately result in people being able to graduate and secure family-sustaining jobs. And there is not one right pathway. For too long, people have been told there's one pathway, and that's a four-year college education, and we know that not to be true. There are many pathways, and we support all of them that, that lead to the goal of, of securing a great job, such as the welders we met with today. So, so it's exciting to be here. It's exciting to see what you've been able to do here at Lewis and Clark Community College, really best-in-class program, and, um, and truly a pleasure to support the great work of, of Congressman Davis. So, so thank you for having me here, and I look forward to hearing from all the panelists. Absolutely. Thank you, and uh, please thank President Trump for signing Absolutely. the Perkins reauthorization. Very important. Uh, I was not kidding when I said she welded better than me. Uh, we were over at the, the news slightly. center, <laughs> and they pointed out um, some of the some of the items that are purchased through Perkins funding uh, that allow so many folks to go through this training program here to be able to go out into the workforce and not just get a job, get a very good paying job. And speaking of good paying jobs, we've got some employers and folks that represent uh, companies and business and industry and labor here, and, and I know we want to hear from them. Um, but I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you for being here today. Um, I'm going to start with Heidi Capazzi. Heidi is the Chief Human Resources Officer and Senior VP for HR at Boeing, a small business here in the Metro East. So uh, Heidi, I was with Dennis last night. Um, and, and the president. And I will say Boeing was one of the first companies to step up and sign our pledge to America's workers and commit to over 100,000 enhanced career opportunities for American workers. So we are incredibly appreciative. So thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Heidi, the floor is yours. Thank you. And first of all, good morning, everybody. I just want to uh, issue a special thank you to Congressman, to you, Ms. Trump, and to uh, Dr. Uh, Chapman for having me here today and allowing Boeing to lend its voice to this really important topic of workforce development. 
It's also great to be here on campus at Lewis and Clark in Illinois. Uh, we are, uh, this is a very important state to the Boeing Company. You may not realize, but our world headquarters is up in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, this area in particular ho is home to uh, many Boeing employees who find their work at St. Clair, Illinois facility. And then across the river, we have many folks who uh, work at our St. Louis facility, which is our major uh, tactical fighter aircraft production location. So uh, this is a place that's near and dear to us. And if you look across the country more broadly, we've got about 140,000 employees living in every state of the union. Um, as the world's largest aerospace company, we do have a lot of customers that are overseas, but about 90% of our manufacturing occurs here in the United States. So already you can see how important workforce development is uh, to our company. If I step back a, a bit, I, I would just say, you know, we are a company that's over 100 years old now, and as we move into our second century, we've set our sights on a very bold mission. Connect, protect, explore, and inspire the world through aerospace innovation. And it is our people, our workforce, who are the fuel for that innovation. They bring the skills, the know-how, the capabilities that allow us to serve our customer priorities and ultimately to, to fulfill that mission. And uh, we talk inside the company about the fact that the most important investment we make is in our people. But honestly, this takes a village. And so the partnership with Congress, with the administration, with our local educational partners uh, is absolutely critical to us. And I would just underscore a few of those ways that those that partnership manifested itself here recently. Um, you mentioned the Pledge to America's Workers. It was a moment of pride for us to be able to uh, have uh, Secretary of Labor Acosta come to our South Carolina facility where we build the 787. And we signed on for 100 thousand uh, new opportunities for career development for our employees, many of whom are here in the Illinois area. Uh, tax reform will be a large source of funding those development opportunities. We had the, the pleasure of announcing at the start of this year a $300 million commitment to our employees and the communities where we live and work. A uh, hundred million of that is devoted just to workforce development. And my favorite part of the story is we literally went out and crowdsourced with our employee population. You know, what are the areas that you need support and that you see as critical for your future? 40,000 folks responded, and we're on a path now of modernizing our learning platforms and, uh, and technical skilling and upskilling for a very broad population of our workforce with more things to come. Absolutely critical. Uh, the Perkins uh, uh, Career Technical Act, that is, uh, I want to just issue a thank you for your support to that, Congressman, but um, Ms. Trump, for all that you did to really get that across the finish line. As you talked about, that's just a huge uh, opportunity for us to continue uh, to uh, bring uh, globally competitive 21st century skills development opportunities to our people, both the current workforce of the Boeing Company and the many people that we hope to hire uh, into great jobs going forward. So maybe just to close out for me, I would just say that our commitment to this is significant and it is long term. Uh, workforce development is not a nice to have, it is a must have for us and for our future and we are very proud to be partnering with all the right folks here on the stage to make that happen. Thank you Heidi, thank you very much, thank you both. A growing economy, certainty in the tax code helps companies like Boeing and Phillips 66, uh, invest in our future and invest in the folks who are, who are going to school here at Lewis and Clark and so many other institutions. Uh, I'd be remiss not to thank uh, Mayor McCormick from Godfrey for allowing us into his community today. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jerry, no Jerry Noyle. Jerry's the manager of the Wood River Refinery for Phillips 66. The floor is yours. Well, first, again, thank you for coming, Congressman, Ms. Trump, Dr. Dale. Uh, Philip 66 uh, sees tremendous and continued value also for workforce development. As an oil and gas company, petrochemical company, we've got operations here as well as around the, uh, the country and even some worldwide uh, operations. And all of those operations produce the products that are critical to our everyday lives. The fuel that goes in the planes. Uh, the gasoline that goes in the cars, and even when you get into the petrochemicals, all the plastics are derivatives of fossil fuels. So if you underscore all that, to keep these factories and these plants running, 
It requires a tremendous amount of people that are highly skilled, highly trained, and capable. And as you look, as we near retirement, we have a lot of turnover that's going on, a lot of uh, uh, gaps that are out there and will be out there. So it's very incumbent upon all of us to continue to support workforce development, partner with the likes of Lewis and Clark uh, Community College as well as around the country to continue to progress that. The administration is doing great efforts to also promote that for the business, and uh, we thank you for that. And thanks for allowing, allowing us to be here. Thank you very, very much, Jerry. Let's give Philip 66. We've heard from large manufacturers like Philip 66 and Boeing. Uh, smaller manufacturers that operate in this community really provide opportunities for many families to uh, get a good paying job and, and, uh, and really a great workplace that I've been to a few times. Uh, Jane Sally is our next guest from Cope Plastics, just right up the road. Well, I, I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity, uh, Congressman Davis and Ms. Trump and Dr. Chapman. Um, hard act to follow, Boeing and Phillips 66. Uh, uh, we, um, just a little background on COPE. Uh, a lot of the folks here locally know COPE Plastics, but uh, we are, uh, I say, a small company compared to these two next to me. Um, we're a $100 million company. We are a, a distributor and fabricator of plastic sheet, rod, and tube. We have, um, over the years, uh, started fabricating uh, machine parts. Uh, plastics is everywhere. It's uh, in almost every industry market out there. We uh, do support um, uh, big in the construction and uh, heavy equipment, agricultural uh, side. Obviously, John Deere and Caterpillar are one of our uh, two larger customers. Um, but 380 employees, you know, it's, it's nowhere near that, but I think uh, Ms. Trump mentioned the private sector, and, um, you know, I think we make up a lot of those, you know, if you combine all these smaller manufacturers and companies in the nation, uh, it's a pretty big piece of the, of the pie. So, um, we have, and Dr. Dale knows this, we've, um, I've been advocating for a long time workforce development. We have about 100 machinists here in the, in the area. Um, we're continuing to, to grow, and, and the last two years have been awesome. Um, so, you know, it's one of those where we need those machinists. We, we are, we're a custom job shop. We um, have CNC lathes, routers, mills, saws, and those things, um, you know, we, we look for those, those uh, educated and, and trained uh, folks. We've resorted over the years to um, if you have the aptitude and you can make it to work on time and, you, you know, you have good attendance, will train you. So we've resorted to just training in-house because of that. Um, so working with Lewis and Clark Community College, um, we have Southern, Southwestern Illinois College here in the area and Rankin, uh, we've used, um, you know, we, we work with those facilities to try to get educated, trained uh, machinists, operators, and so on. So um, again, um, just very happy to be here and to, to work with, and obviously we'll be saying that pledge as well. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity here to be representing the smaller manufacturers in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So we've got a lot of representatives from industry that are employers, and um, in a growing economy, you need people to build the infrastructure that we're going to need to continue to grow. And I'm proud to have my good friend from uh, Laborers Local 477 in Springfield, Brad Shivey, here today. Brad, the floor is yours, buddy. Thank you, Congressman. Um, Ms. Trump, I want to tell you, when you're, in your opening statements, you spoke about how everyone believed they had to have a four-year degree. I didn't go to college. I went to the military. And today, I sit with the advisor of the president, congressman, educators, and CEOs on this table in front of these fine people. So, thank you. I just want to talk a little bit today about what we do and, uh, within the Labor's International Union and our uh, way we create jobs and how some of these bills are so important to us. Uh, our apprenticeship program just in the state of Illinois for LIUNA takes in between 300 and 400 men and women every year. When they enter into the program, it's a three-year program, so at all times we'll have around 900 individuals who are rotating through that program. And those individuals were not taken from other jobs. They were taken from being unemployed. So that gets them off the rolls of unemployment or for public assistance. 
when they become a member, they receive health insurance, not only for themselves, but for their spouse and their dependents. So that takes that onus off of the community too. They graduate our program in three years with 13 state certifications that they can go all over the country with and travel and transfer to any union. I know individuals who have got through our apprenticeship program, graduated, took their certifications and transferred to Hawaii. And, and you can do that. And so there's not a lot of places where you have that mobility where you take your career to where your family needs you. <clears throat> we also have veterans committees where we work diligently to recruit veterans. And how it's pertinent, and it's definitely pertinent to, to your administration, is that I remember years ago we took in, just a few years ago, uh, a young man who had done three tours, one in Afghanistan, two in Iraq, and he had just come from a deployment in Fallujah. Could not find a job. He was working at a trainer uh, at a CrossFit gym. Couldn't find employment. I spoke with him, learned the story. He went into our apprenticeship program, I was proud to be able to be a part of that, graduated the apprenticeship program. Today, he's a straw boss and a supervisor on a pipeline in West Virginia that your administration helps going. And Congressman, I know how you feel about pipelines. That, that individual is gainfully employed, not just gainfully employed, well employed, with a living wage, and doing well and surviving. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's something that's, that's just right. We work with programs like federal subsidized programs like higher education. So Lincoln Land Community College and, and, and the town I'm from, Springfield, has a program to recruit minorities and females into the construction industry. For many years, uh, the trades were, were low on, on that. And it's always been a mantra of my organization, the Labor Center National Union, that we should look like the community we belong to. So we work diligently with that program, and to this day, we have been part and parcel of placing 200 men and women from that class, which specifically helps females and minorities get into the trades. And what a successful thing. When Lincoln Land cut the ribbon on their new workforce development building, the individual who did so is a member of mine. He's 50-year-old, African-American male, and in the speech he said, this is the first Christmas I've been able to buy my grandchildren gifts. I think everybody there cried. So uh, the programs that we do have and the, and the work like why we're here today, they do affect people's lives. They do. And it is the right thing. It is. Also, um, our organization, my local specifically, uh, we also work in conjunction with the Department of Corrections. A lot of people might wonder why. We have an enormous amount of males that come to our union halls to apply, but it would be a very daunting task for a five foot two female or a single mother of two to walk in the door, much less a young female that just was released from a state institution. So we go there and I teach and I get with individuals and talk about the trades and I specifically talk about higher education. And I talk about the fact that when you get out, there are programs that have been established, not only with state subsidies, but federal subsidies, and they're there for your benefit to succeed. There are programs, so don't have the belief that there is no way to succeed, because there is. And I've seen individuals, uh, when I've gone to institutions in Lincoln, Illinois, met them there, then I meet them when I go talk to the classes at higher education, then I meet them when they apply for our apprenticeship, then I hand them their certificate when they graduate, and then I see them get married, buy homes, send their kids to college, and um, I see how it succeeds. So these programs and everything that everyone talks about today, in my belief, um, it drives all of us. It is uh, the real path to the American dream. And that's what we should be doing, and what an honor it is to be here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing all um, of those very touching stories, and um, and and I'm glad you mentioned uh, those who have come out of our prison system because every year close to 650,000 people exit our federal and state prison systems, and we know that if they have the skills 
to secure a job and, and do secure a job, that they're much, much, much less likely to commit a crime and re-enter prison. Um, thus, being able to provide for themselves, for their family, keeping our community safer, and having an economy such as we do today really enables them that chance. So those who have served their time, who have um, paid back their debt to society, they should be afforded that opportunity to, to thrive. And um, our administration is, is very, very focused on just that. So the intersection of prison reform and workforce training and development is, is something that we're very um, much prioritizing legislatively and other, otherwise. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Ivanka. Uh, I want to hear from some students uh, who graduated from Lewis and Clark here today. Our first student is Charlie Humphrey. Charlie, tell us your story. Um, first, I'd like to say that um, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to be here, and I'm very humbled by it. Um, second, I'd like to start that, um, like most high school graduates, I, too, started at a four-year university. Um, after two and a half years of double majoring in mechanical engineering and business, I realized that it wasn't the route that I wanted to take. I needed something more hands-on, something more fulfilling. So I enrolled, um, in the, uh, I enrolled in the welding program at Lewis and Clark. Um, right away, I loved it. It was the most amazing thing that I had done with my life thus far. Um, <laughs> gas tungsten arc welding quickly became my favorite. It's very tedious work, and uh, from most research that I've seen, women are very good at it. We have steadier hands. We have the patience to deal with it. So that became my favorite. <laughs> yes. I think I was talking to your instructor about you earlier. Are you the golden arm? <laughs> uh, so after uh, a couple months of being in the program, uh, me and Travis Jumper uh, decided that we were going to start the American Welding Society group here at the school. And it took a lot of hard work, um, but after many months of going over paperwork and trying to recruit students, we finally got it done. And uh, now we pair up with the American Welding Society in St. Louis, and we get to go on tours of many of the big companies throughout the area. And I think that means a lot to a lot of the kids getting started in the program. Um, because they get to see some of the places they work in. And when we start in the program, it's not just book work, so it's stuff that grabs the student's attention. I mean, you get to be in the shop, you get to learn new things, and it's just being in that kind of environment, it really gets you ready to be in the workforce. Yeah. Um, currently, I, I graduated two years ago, and currently I work for Mechanical Dynamics and Analysis. It's a power generation company, and uh, I get to travel all across the U.S. and abroad. And uh, it's really fulfilling to me. I really enjoy my job, and I'm really happy that I got to be a part of something like that. So, thank you. Wow. We've met the golden arm. Yes. Uh, our, our next graduate, uh, she graduated from Process Operations Technology Program, is Bobby McCormick. Bobby? Thank you very much for having me. It's quite the honor to sit on this panel to represent a P-TECH program. Um, I am a little bit more nervous, so I have wrote mine, and I'm going to try not to read it to you. <laughs> so the workforce development programs have allowed institutions such as Lewis and Clark to develop programs that would focus on meeting that gap between losing our baby boomers and the educator force that we've all grown up. You go to college, you get that four-year degree, but there's that gap. And so with Lewis and Clark and other technical schools being able to create a more hands-on, they're able to create a force that we are a dynamic workforce. We're able to bring forth our skills and our talents in a way that we can not only come into the workforce as a strong asset for our employers, but we can also help fill that gap more seamlessly than if we just come with an education alone. If we have that hands-on skill set. As a graduate of the program, I've been able to demonstrate all the skills that I've learned through Lewis and Clark Community College. And I have my current 
sorry. <laughs> Within the industry, my um, assets, my current employer is Eastman Chemical, and I think I have astounded them with my accomplishments and with my knowledge and my foresight and my ability to understand and stand beside a man who has been doing this work for 40 years and be able to understand and implement it just as efficiently as he can. For myself personally, I take it very personally that there is this opportunity in our back door, if you will, Lewis and Clark. Um, my husband and myself both are graduates of the program. Um, we both have been very successful. We both have created a career path that the goals and the dreams we once had and thought were just dreams are now actually attainable goals. We're able to see the foreshadowing of our future. We know retirement is in our future and it's not just a dream. And we know we'll be able to put our children through school as well. Um, Personally, it has enabled me to think outside of my box. It has pushed me to be completely out of my comfort zone. But it has also proven me that time and time again, if I set a goal, I give it 110% and I stay focused, I can accomplish anything. And I know with my positive attitude and my skill set that I have that I am completely prepared for my future and both my future and my family's future is bright. So thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. And you could go into communications if you decide to change careers, because how good was that? That was excellent. You did not seem nervous to me, neither of you. <laughs> uh, well, um, our next panelist uh, is a graduate of a program that's actually very uh, personal to me, because my wife is sitting here in the front row, and she's also in nursing. So uh, Robin Scott is our, uh, our last student panelist, and why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience here? Um, so I'm kind of coming to you from the standpoint that I'm a recipient of um, WIOA and also um, have went through the nursing program um, here at Lewis and Clark. Um, I, just to give you a little background information, I'm going into my fourth semester. Uh, when I started taking classes here shortly after high school, um, and I did well and then in 2007 I gave birth to a baby boy, Jacob. And um, at that point, I had another person depending on me. Um, failure was not an option, and so I had to postpone my education to join the workforce. Um, I took various jobs, which afforded a one-bedroom apartment with a concrete parking lot for a front yard, and we slept on eggshell padding for a couple of years because I couldn't afford a mattress. So I understand what it's like when you don't have the skill set or the education that you need. Um, these experiences helped me to understand the importance of education um, and kept me determined to work hard until our financial situation improved. Um, eventually I was able to return to school and continue my education, um, although I've, I endured many other obstacles. Um, the support and inspiration that I gained through the faculty and staff here at Lewis and Clark helped me to be successful. Um, and then when I entered into my first semester, I began to receive WIOA. Um, this support that I had from that um, helped me with my books, my tuition, and the supplies I needed. Um, that also enabled me to be able to spend more time with my son um, working. I um, started working at a hospital, at Sioux Hospital in Trauma, uh, which I, as a result of the program, have been fully prepared for. Um, and it's also allowed me to spend time studying and be successful in my program. Um, our, our nursing program here at Lewis and Clark is known for um, how rigorous it is and dip challenging, but we are known for how well prepared our students are when we get into the workforce. Um, I've also been able to take advantage of various opportunities like being tr student trustee. I had the opportunity to testify in front of the Illinois House um, to support bills, uh, Senate Bill 3045, which if passed, will provide students with the opportunity to earn their BSN at the community college level. Um, for me, that would mean less transition time. I could continue going and where my, my um, administration knows me. Um, so, in regards to um, 
the workforce, one thing that I kind of want to touch back on is that I think it's really important that we continue to have discussions, support that transcends all sectors. Um, it's really important to start with high schools and to go and talk to these kids while they're still in high school. I know Travis Jumper, I was meeting with him yesterday and he said he goes to recruit. I've also had the opportunity um, in my honors program in nursing to go and speak with high school students who are in your higher level science classes. And I think that's really important for them to see what does this look like because then they see what is the next step. Um, also, to continue to have that support um, in both the public and private sectors, it, it just helps with the transition through each part um, of this process. And it just, it helps you, it kind of, it just, it gives you the encouragement that you need to just keep going and to be successful in what you're doing. Um, and then, I had one more note here that I'm trying to find, but um, anyway, I think that's just pretty much to have, continue to have these conversations is, is really important, and I just thank you so much for being willing and providing us with that opportunity to do so. Thank you, Robin. Thank the students. Now, we wanted to hear the stories of employers, students, laborers, and um, to really show you what our community is all about here in Central and Southwestern Illinois. Now, I'd like to open it up to you if you had any questions of the panelists. Um, more that we've got a few minutes left. Uh, I want to make sure we get some of your questions answered. Well, I learned so much today, and I really want to thank everyone for, for their contribution to, to this conversation. I think what I saw earlier when um, we actually visited uh, really a state-of-the-art welding facility, um, and then what I heard on the panel really represented what is the best model of industry, whether it's large employers like Boeing or smaller businesses. Um, and thank you, um, Coke Plastics, for coming together and, uh, and signing the pledge as well. But, um, but for the private sector to team up with um, the educational institutions in their community, whether it be a technical school or, um, or a, a vocational school or a high school in some cases um, or a four-year university and develop collectively curriculums that will prepare those students for the jobs in demand in those local communities. So, so that is critical and that's something that we want to encourage and facilitate. I think the, the rebranding of education and the dialogue around what is the ultimate goal of education and obviously that's to prepare people to be able to thrive and to be able to succeed and to be able to provide for themselves um, and ultimately their families if they choose to have one and and to highlight the various examples so i very much appreciate your comment about introducing people to a variety of options at a much younger age so that they can start to experiment and learn what they're good at. So reaching into the high schools, exposing particularly girls um, to, to STEM fields and showing them what's possible. You know, a, a sad thing is that a lot of people, you wonder why there are less people going into the skills trade. You wonder why, despite how lucrative welding is and welding is a very lucrative field to go into and a very high demand field there are more vacant welding jobs and there are welders to fill it yet the average age of a welder is 56 a lot of kids these days don't know that they are good with their hands because they've never had a shop class so thinking about makers class thinking about giving um, children exposure and opportunities to identify areas they may be passionate about or may show aptitude in beyond traditional academic curriculum is, is so important and, and something we're working with industry um, and they're a great industry leader. Home Depot has partnered with us and is doing a great job in creating opportunities for exposures and, and so many other companies. But, but we think that is, is critically important. But just sharing these stories 
and, and this president is, is very committed to this. Um, the National Council for the American Workers seeking to highlight this through ad campaigns, um, through the elevation of in-demand fields across the gamut, whether it's cybersecurity and um, fields of the future um, or, or traditional fields that we have um, vacancies in. Um, but really we call upon um, everyone in this room to, to really join the call to action and to help us. And, and really as I traveled around the country hearing these stories and, um, and, and hearing these personal experiences and, and hearing you so eloquently tell us um, about what you've learned and, and your personal experiences is, um, is, uh, is tremendously meaningful. And, um, and I, will take, I will take these experiences and, and these lessons back to Washington and they'll inform the work that we're doing there. So, so I thank you for sharing with us and I thank you, Doctor, for, for inviting us and hosting us. And, and really, I thank you, Congressman um, Davis. You're out there fighting every day. And, um, and we know the ones who fight and the ones who don't fight as much. He fights a lot um, and he fights hard and he's very persistent. <laughs> we like that. We like that. So we, we, we know something in my family about persistence. So it's a good thing. Um, but, but really, thank you for, for having me back. And, um, and it's exciting, it's exciting to, to be here and to, to experience it. Well, thank you, Ivanka, for your leadership. I know all of us here are grateful for your leadership, but the results are what matters. And the results of your leadership and this administration's leadership on, on many important issues, not just Perkins reauthorization, tax reform, uh, investment in higher education, we're actually seeing results. And to hear the stories uh, from our employers, but our students, Charlie, it, when you, you mentioned hit home to me, I, I know a lot of folks that I grew up with that decided to go try that four-year institution. Yeah. And when they left, you know what, they came out with a lot of debt and no degree. Um, what you're doing is going to allow somebody like Charlie to understand that there are a lot, of other, a lot of other options besides borrowing money against their future, against their family's future, because they may not want to be in the field that they initially thought they were going to be in. We've got to have opportunities. And, and you mentioned I'm persistent, Ivanka. Um, I can't let you leave here without talking about a couple of my bills that um, we're going to work on together <laughs> when we go back. Uh, one would, would assist uh, folks like Charlie, who went to school, oh, I read came about out it. with debt. And Getting this the private sector to help pay off those student loans. Yes. So I was studying it on the plane. I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Thank you. We, we cease. Go ahead. You're good. <laughs> You know, we saw what the, what the tax code, when reformed and put in a more correct position to help families, what it does to grow our economy, why not incentivize employers to help pay down student debt by making sure that people like Charlie wouldn't have to pay taxes on up to, what, $5,250 $50 a year? Wouldn't you like your employer to be able to pay down some student debt sometime? Yeah, that's a bill we have, and that's one we're going to work on together. Another bill that really affects what Brad does every day is to encourage employers to hire apprentices. Yep. Let's use our tax code to get more people out into the workforce and really encourage more job growth, more economic development, because in the end, it's all about results, and the results are what's going to matter most, and you guys are delivering them in your administration, and thank you for that. So while we're at it, <laughs> We're also going to be working on opening up Pell funding to expand it to um, shorter term programs that are important programs but less than the 600 hours that are currently required to have Pell eligibility, which also requires you to have a bachelor degree. So to, to enable more people to access Pell funding um, for to acquire the important skills they need to be able to secure a job. So we think that's an important report, reform to Pell funding. So, so hopefully we can get that done as well. So Absolutely. Lots to come. Well, we'll welcome you back here. Maybe it'll be two weeks 
longer than the last two weeks. Um, <laughs> but we want to let you know there's always a standing invitation. Thank you. To have much. you and uh, your dad, uh, anyone from the administration come in, because we, we really enjoy the partnership that you've allowed us to, to help create. And again, thank you to Dr. Chapman and the Lewis and Clark community. They're the ones around here that made this happen. I know Ivanka has a hard stop one minute ago. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, panelists. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity. And again, thank you, Ms. Trump.